Expedition Canada. The Rocky Mountains to the Maritimes. Set your reel and cast your line. Come on, let's go fish in Canada. I love it. River oh, Creek, Lake or Stream. The Fish in Canada Show is brought to you in part by Coleman, the outdoor company, Muscal, serious bug protection, Prince Craft Boats, the more you know, the better we look, and Mercury, number one on the water. The whitefish is very much a misunderstood fish. The fact that it's a bottom feeder and it lives in the deep dark reaches of cold Canadian lakes shouldn't be a strike against it. And I think that after watching today's episode, your eyes will be opened up just like ours were. Pete and I kept hearing about the amazing whitefish angling opportunities across the country. So we decided to take a shot of them for ourselves and we didn't have to travel far since some of the biggest whiteies are within an hour's drive of our studio. We're heading out to beautiful Lake Simcoe, one of the best producers of big whitefish in the world. That's right, the same lake that produces giant smallmouth as well as a whole array of other species. Lake Simcoe, or simply Simcoe as it's referred to by locals, could be called Canada's best all-round producer of trophy fish. From perch and crappie, to smallmouth and largemouth, to lake trout, pike, walleye, and of course whitefish, Simcoe is the real deal. Fishing for Simcoe's whiteies isn't rocket science. However, it's not child's play either. Yeah, there he is. A white fish, beautiful. Is he coming up for you? He's up there already, bud. It takes some getting used to. The subtle nudge of a white fish taking a bait is a feeling all its own. There you go, brother. Well, a perfect little fish, eh? Tony Steinfeld of Lightning Series Lures was on the water today with us. He gave us a bait that he had designed that's deadly on white fish. It's called a shoal digger. What do you got there, Tony? Tell me about that thing. Well, this is uh, this is called the shoal digger, and basically what it is, it's a it's a weight forward uh, half ounce jig head, and basically it's imitating a minnow. And what it does, it hangs nose down like so, and all you're doing is very gently lifting, dropping like this. So it looks like it's feeding on the bottom almost. Yes. Yeah. And it's it's been just dynamite for whitefish, uh, lake trout. Yeah. And you got them in one weight only. Uh, in half ounce, yes. Yeah. Um, you really don't need much more than half ounce. You can feel bottom no problem in 85 feet of water. Right. And what made you come up with that design? It was just, uh, there's a, there was other baits that were on the market and they, they didn't have the proper sizes and I just started playing around. Uh, I manufacture a bunch of different lures and I just went ahead and designed this and it actually turned out very well. Yeah, see the problem I have with the spoon is a lot of times if I flutter it and jig it, it'll hook its line, hook itself, and end up kind of like this, and it becomes ineffective. Whereas those, I didn't have a problem at all. Yes. Now, I, I can't get bit on this stupid thing, but uh, <laughs> so I've got to uh, practice up with my technique, I think. I've, after you show me that thing bouncing on the bottom, head down like that, I kind of, uh, now I see what you're talking about. But uh, so yeah, Lightning Series lures, check them out, and uh, you're going to see Tony here probably catch a few fish. He's given us a clinic, so we decided to pull over and talk to him and steal some of his baits. <laughs> Electronics play an integral part of this type of fishing. Since the water is so deep, you need to stay directly above your lure. By watching and fishing for a single fish or a group of fish on your electronics, it will up your odds tremendously. All I'm looking for here is you'll see right here, there's a blue line. I think it's blue, blue or gray, above the red and yellow. And that's a fish sitting right on the bottom. Knowing there's a fish on the graph underneath you just gives you that much more confidence. And then, of course, lets you know that there's fish there. Got one. There you go. Got him, you bag. <laughs> he bit me and came back for you. He's off. <laughs> oh, no. Yep. Now, that I got my drag set moderately tight. And when I, that fish bit, I lifted into him and he pulled my drag. And I still didn't put a hook through him. It just goes to show you, no guarantees. 
They're coming up to a little, bit, a little break, uh, rise right now, Mikey, just a little. That's probably a single fish down there. At other times, you can just lift like that and catch one. <laughs> you get him? <laughs> oh my god, I got him. I knew that he was there the first time, couldn't get him. Stopped paying attention, Pete, just did the old rope and dope. Rope and dope. Jigged it a couple. Wow, this thing's going nuts. <laughs> <laughs> we got some fish underneath us here, man. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Unbelievable. I was just talking about how you can jig and work a fish that you see on your graph and when the bite happens you're you're anticipating it so much that you actually miss him <laughs> or you hit him and he doesn't get hooked. <laughs> and then I was just dorking around jiggling it. Boof! And he drilled it. Oh, that's a good one. Look at him down there, right here. Oh yeah. That's a big one. Where's the net? Get. That's a fatty. It's got some air in his belly, I think. Hang over to that net, that boy. Get my leg. <laughs> there you go, get that bold, was, eh? That was classic. I gotta watch my spoon, I gotta move over the way here. Just a little chunker. Rocket, look at the slime coming off him. Oh yeah, he's dripping Plunge good. him back, but he gotta tor torpedo him back. There he goes. You got slimed good. Oh, yeah. oh God, they are slimy. They must have a little sharp <clears throat> edge on them. He cut me open. See, tit for tat. I gave him a little cut, he gave me one. Oh, we gotta yeah, get ready, but you know, I 80 feet of water. <laughs> I got two underneath me too here, bud. Oh, this one feels real heavy, man. Does it? <laughs> wow. There's a lot of fish underneath the boat go, right now. You know what, I'm gonna keep jigging until you. Wow, it's pulling drag. I never caught no white fish pulling drag. Got a big oh, laker on, kid. Might have me a laker. Wait, this thing's digging. Look at this thing. Yeah. Wow. That's great. Got a lot oh. of fish right under the boat. As soon as I saw them under the boat. Yeah, I see one. This fish, it was just a, a little blue haze off of the red line on the bottom. How's he feel, bud? Oh, this is a good one. Tell me when he's getting close now. Oh, wow, this feels heavy. Oh, there he is. Get in that for you. Look at the bubbles come out of him. Good job, Michael. Nice. On the gold jigging spoon. Sometimes you just gotta rile them up. Good work, man. Where's the pliers, buddy? Right under, uh, right under my feet. There you go. Oh, he's off. Perfect. This is a gold color Yeah, I was gonna tell you, he's like a big herring. Not bad little white fish. That's a great fish, buddy. No, he's not clipped. So that's, oh, no? a, that's a, a reproducing fish. I wonder how many are in this lake, eh? God, there's that's so many. That's funny. The way they sort of just sit there for a minute, then yep. they kick a few times and go down. Yep. You gotta get them back quick. If you're gonna release them, you gotta yep. drop them back fast. That's the, that's the only bad part about catching weight fish. Is that right there? <laughs> They're slimy buggers. <laughs>Two baits we're using today require slightly different presentations. With a shoal digger, a subtle jigging action near the bottom is required, and with a jigging spoon, a quick pull to impart some flash is usually what it takes. You have to be careful with both of these baits though, as if you lift too hard, you might snag fish, and those fish have to be let go. It, they seem like such an obscure little slimy fish, these white fish, but I, evidently they're pretty popular, Petey. There's gonna be- Look at the city I, out there. I gotta say, 30 boats? Right there in the one spot. Yeah, it's a good alternative to fish through May and June if you're not a walleye fisherman. Close to Toronto, and they're good smoked. Oh yeah. Water temperature, just to give you an idea, is 64 on the nose right here. So, it's a big flat bottom, it's 80.6 80 feet right here. We worked our way down about three, four weeks ago, you're gonna catch them at 50 or 60 seem to progressively move out a little bit deeper, a little bit deeper as the weeks go on. So you just got to keep that in mind for the summer, but it goes well into bass season. These guys fish these uh, whitefish on Simcoe in well into July. The Lake Simcoe population of whitefish is quite unique and has a lot of history. Local angler and MNR Extension Services technician Will Wegman tells all about this very different fish species. You know, a lot of people are wondering if there are different species of whitefish in Lake Simcoe. Basically, there is just the one. It's the lake whitefish. This one species of fish does have various hues, so sometimes you see them with different colors. Sometimes you'll actually see humpbacks uh, with this feature prominent in the individual, but the bottom line is they're still all lake whitefish. 
You know, we've been stocking whitefish in Lake Simcoe for a really long time now, and even earlier governments stocked whitefish into Lake Simcoe. Uh, but the modern day whitefish stocking has probably uh, been around since uh, 1992, uh, where we stock 140,000 whitefish every year into Lake Simcoe. And these whitefish are Lake Simcoe stock. These fish are released every year, 140,000 of them into the lake. And the great news is that over the last four or five years, we're beginning to see signs that whitefish are indeed coming back. Natural reproduction is taking place and uh, you know anglers are catching smaller whitefish with no clips on them, which indicates they're a wild fish. And uh, it's all great news for the fishery. It's the only fish I could appreciate the smell of the slime. <laughs> it's like a salad. A little bit of ranch dressing, you got yourself a cucumber salad. Lake Simcoe has some monster whitefish, and the biggest one that was ever caught was uh, just over 14 pounds in the late 1990s. And uh, interestingly enough, the biggest whitefish ever caught in the world was caught right here in Ontario. Uh, 1477, uh, it weighed pounds, a monster whitefish that was caught right in Georgian Bay. You know, one of the great things about Lake Simcoe is that the cold water fishery is starting to rebound. You've got some whitefish showing up that are natural. Uh, you've got some lake trout that are showing up that are natural. And the other cold water species that a lot of people may have forgotten about are the cisco or the lake herring. These fish are starting to reproduce again in Lake Simcoe and that's great news. For the time being though, what we've done is we've closed the cisco season or the herring season so that you cannot keep any of them until the population reestablishes. So anglers need to know that they, they may catch the odd cisco out there, but they have to be able to properly identify it and tell the difference between that and a whitefish. We put together an identification program. We've got both little cards, uh, wallet sized cards that show the difference and tell people how to distinguish between the two species. And we've got full size posters. We're trying to get these posters in all the fish huts, all the commercial huts, and even offering the posters free for those individuals that want to put them in the hut. And it basically it focuses on the mouth of the fish and the white fish that has that underslung mouth and the cisco or the lake herring that has that pointed mouth. And that is a key distinguishing characteristic. But the posters and the wallet size cards just make it that much easier. So become involved and feel that you have a stake in the future of that fishery. The beauty of fishing a lake like Simcoe is, even though you're fishing for one species, there's a good chance you're going to hook into one of the many other species that lives in this huge body of water. When you're fishing for whitefish, there's a good chance you're going to catch a lake or two. Hang on, hang on. Oh, we're good. Oh, boy. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Look at this thing. Look at Here the, the bubbles. bubbles. That's a laker. That's a laker doing that. <laughs> wow, look at those bubbles coming up. <laughs> oh, this is great. It's funny because the anticipation is huge. Hey, when you get a big fish like these, like, oh, I want to see it. I'm going to get your fish. I have a spinning rod on my arm. It's burning, bro. Why is it white? It's a laker in it? No. Oh, yeah, it's a laker. For sure. Look at him burping. Burp, burp. Here he goes. He's going to run. It's a long, skinny leg, right? <laughs> I can't believe this fish is doing this to me. <laughs> it's not like I got my drag loose. There he is, I see him He's again. He's coming back up. Yeah. Try and scoop him on this grab. Oh boy, it's gonna be tough, that one. How are we gonna do this, Mikey? Yeah, I can't turn it, I'll turn it to you. Can't see him. Here he comes, buddy. Here he comes, here he comes. I got him. Nice. Got him. <laughs> That's a heavy fish, Mikey. Wow, I never caught me no laker like that out here. He's <laughs> off. Did he get up? Oh, you come on down. line tight. Like, oops. Where's your glove? Oh, he's not a slimy. Look at that. You're nice like a biker, eh? He's clipped. See, he's missing a fin back here by the, the tail. Get right there. So that's, that's a stalker. That's the full size fin. There's a small. You know why he pulled good for the brother. size of him? 40 minutes north of Toronto. <laughs> <laughs> Look at oh. there he goes, there he goes. Right underneath the boat. Oh, he's coming back up. He doesn't know where he wants to go. <laughs> there he goes. <laughs> Look at him, he's just skating across the surface there. That was pretty awesome. If you really want to take advantage of fishing deep water like we're on today, use either braided line, fluorocarbon, or a combination of both. The lack of stretch on such a long line will help you feel the bites and set the hook. Do you want under my boat right now, bud? 
We got a nice big one right underneath the boat right now, buddy. Jingle I don't know what's going to catch him. <laughs> this is great. You look around and you think, what are these guys all fishing for out here in the middle of nowhere? Oh, that's a good fish, Laker. Little lake trout. Just like I said. Catch the odd Laker out here. Nothing wrong with that. So there you go. Shoal digger catches more than just white fish. Pretty awesome though, eh, Pete? Absolutely. I mean, <laughs> out in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, and it's the, you know you go a lot of guys go to way up north to catch fish like this, lake trout, white fish. Man, Simcoe's jam packed. Well, look at all these boats. Every boat over there's got a fish on. <laughs> look at that. It's true. Another one over there. Those all guys that. there. <laughs> Most of the fish, lake trout and white fish, aren't naturally reproducing in Lake Simcoe. Uh, they're stocked every year, and there is. Uh, a population that do reproduce, but uh, you, as you notice, some of the fish we catch will have a fin clipped, which means they're stocked. Um, the good thing about this is you do get the, bo uh, the odd bonus lake trout when you're jigging for these white fish. You'll see a lot of guys are trolling with downriggers and stuff, and they're especially looking for, for lakers, and you can see on the graphs, 40, 50 feet down, big hooks, those are probably lake trout. But like I said, the odd time you do uh, you hook into one with this light tackle and it's a wicked fight. There's one, Mikey. You got one there? Got him. Oh, you dirtbag on the spoon. Oh, I, bought, I brought a bag full of nice troll diggers. I bought to catch that thing with. three weeks ago, a month ago, for smallmouth kids. Yeah. I, mean, I did, I swear to God I did. Oh, wow. See that thing pump? Oh, lordy. 20 pound Laker, bud. You got yourself another 20 pound whitefish, I think. They get up to 18 pounds in here, brother. Hey, I'll just be your trolling motor man, okay? To be my trolling motor man. Oh my God, look at that down there. <laughs> the amount of whitefish species is quite astounding. There's the common, lake, Atlantic, round, Whoa. mountain, pygmy, and broad whitefish. That's a lot of whitefish. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's old. Hey, oh, the hook popped out. Get a good grip, there. Buddy. Real quick, shot of them. That's a good one. Beautiful. Look at that. He you can see him nice. driving down there 10, 12 feet. And that guy had a golden hue to him. See yeah, that? did you notice that? Although whitefish span the country in geographical dispersion, the fishing tactics used for them are pretty much the same. It's like being attacked. You just feel this ding. Yeah. Because the species generally feeds in the bottom, it means that you as an angler don't have to worry too much about the rest of the water column. So by sticking anywhere from right on the bottom to five or six feet off the bottom, you'll do well at catching whitefish. You'll see we're here in 61, 62 feet. And what happens is this here, I'll zoom out, there's a shelf right here. We're fishing just off the back side of it where it drops into 80 feet of water. As far as whitefish size goes, well, that depends on the species. To date, the biggest whitefish caught in Ontario is 14.7 pounds. I truly believe that record. Want me to get the net? Yeah, in a minute here, sure. Man, were you jigging that or dragging it? Jigging it, but very just barely popping it off the bottom. There he is. What do you got? I don't know yet, but look at that thing down there. Snaking around. Big white. That's a, a white whitey. fish. Nice white fish. Wow, nice wow, that's a big one. one. Let me get the net. Yeah, that's a beauty. Look at that thing. That's a gorgeous looking fish. That thing's a big fish. That's a big white fish, brother. <laughs> God, look at the size of this thing, Petey. <laughs> I got pliers here, I can probably, are you on That's there? the biggest white fish I've ever seen. Hold them up nice and high. Pretty cool looking fish. Oh. Don't hurry up, like he's gonna slime you. Oh, he's gonna slime you. That matter? Yeah. A little boogie in here. Yeah. Get her heat out. There she goes. He, she. Come on, buddy. That's a big whitefish. Well, I would like to weigh that. Come here, my, there it goes. Fish in Canada Hotspots. The ultimate fishing guide presents Getting There. Today's hotspot is the edge of a deep flat on Lake Simcoe. Whitefish travel this area during the warming weather of late spring to early summer. Vertical jig either a shoal digger or a heavy jigging spoon, making sure you hit the bottom. 
You'll either hit fish on the pull upwards or feel the fish barely biting as the jig sits on the bottom. Add a bit of scent for some extra insurance. For more hot spots like this one, check out our website. To get to today's great whitefish destination, we took Lake Ridge Road north from Highway 2. We then turned left on Highway 48 heading west and then turned north on Regional Road 18. From there, it's a short drive to the Sybil Point Provincial Park front gates. There's a park fee to enter, but that gives you access to a great boat launch and parking. Visit FishingCanada.com for more details. Fish in Canada was brought to you in part by The Rocket Fishing Rod. MyOutdoorTV.com Outdoor television on the internet. Stearns, the life jacket experts. And RadioWorld.ca Closed captioning provided by Ontario Tourism. Go fish in Ontario.com. For more Fish in Canada, visit fishincanada.com.